Eminem all the way from Snow Fort Worth, Texas. And we've got uh, a funny clip from Heffern and Reap. We've got uh, snow stories. I want you guys to tell me your snow stories. Did you ever get into a snowball fight? Uh, of course you did. Did you ever make a snow penis in someone's front yard? These are the things I want to know, and I want you to call in here in a little bit, all right? So go ahead and jot this number down, 980-368-5177. There should be a number down there at the bottom of the screen. Call in here in a minute, and I want to hear your stories. I got some, and we'll get to those in a minute. But we're going live. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. We're live on Twitter. And I will be taking your comments from time to time as well. Um, I got two interns back here that are uh, keeping up with that kind of stuff. We got uh, Isaiah, the intern, or intern Isaiah. I keep switching that up. He does the three-finger wave. That's the official country-ish wave, by the way, three-finger wave. Because when you're driving and you see someone, sometimes you just go like that. That's, that's where it came from. So that's uh, Isaiah's taking the Facebook comments. And next to him, well, normally we have Elliot the intern in here, but he couldn't make it. So now we have Elliot the intern's intern and his name is mark and he'll be taking the youtube comments thanks for joining us guys um but this is where we're really trying to grow the show and the best way to do that is when people share all right and um there should be a little button at the bottom right corner of your screen and uh, I want you to hit the share button. And while you're doing that, I'll give you time to do it. I, I, I'm going to look right at you. And it's what I call my share stare. And I'm going to look right down the pipe as I do my share stare. Perhaps we can get some music, uh, some share music, the Alan Jackson, as I do the share stare. Uh, yes. If I could make you share. I'd make you do it today Hit that button that's pointing that way Cher's there, brought to you by Cher. Isn't that fun? Wasn't that fun? Wow, we just came up with that off the fly like that. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. Don't forget, William Lee Martin's going to be zooming in here in a minute. We got a great small town news story as well about a real... A modern day Romeo, a St. Valentine, right out of Florida. And uh, that story is going to be at the very end. So stay tuned for that. But let me get to the man sitting right here next to me. A very tall guy coming in around seven feet, 38 inches tall. Um, I like to call him uh, the Southeastern Man of Mystery, but he also goes by Sebastian. How you doing, Sebastian? I'm, I'm, trying, to get over, <laughs> I'm trying to get over the share stare, man. Yeah, you like that share stare? I like that. Right down the pipe. So hopefully people are hitting share right now. I hope so, too. Yeah, because all that sharing I did. Yeah. How you been, dude? Pretty did you good, have a good man. weekend? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm among the living. You're among the living. At least you're not snowed in. Like yes. a lot of the country right now. Yeah, it's everywhere, right? Yeah. I know it's almost everywhere. It did a big old dip. The Alan Jackson, do we have the the uh look at this. This is uh this is what's going on right now. And a lot of people are dealing with this. As you can <clears> see, <throat> it's a lot of purple right there in the middle and it goes down. But look at us. We're right here. We're right on the edge. So we we got a lot of rain, but a lot of people watching us right now are snowed in and uh yeah, so we avoided that. I was in Columbus, Ohio, and it did snow a little bit, but not like not like this is. So, but how are you? I'm I feel like I just talked over the, your introduction. You no, doing that's something. I'm great. I'm fine. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Well, good. I'm, I'm actually curious about this uh, outfit you have on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which part? Well, I see. I like the hat here. The hat is. Let's get. The, the mayor of Hickory. Yeah, mayor of Hickory. I, I haven't forgotten about that. Um, it's just a little early to be talking about it. Talking but I will be bragging. Yeah. Too, too early to brag about it. Yeah, too early to brag. But I'll go ahead and got the hat. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was sent to me by my manager. My manager loved the idea that I'm running for the mayor of Hickory. And he got all excited, and he made this hat for me and sent it to me in the mail. And it looks cool. I like this. Yeah, this looks, leather patch yeah, on there. Uh, we should really think about using this for country-ish. I like it. I the like leather it. part of it. 
So, yeah, uh, I will be running for mayor pretty soon. Also, I don't know if you noticed the shirt. I like the shirt. I like the color. This is the official shirt of the Reaps Peeps comedy cruise coming up November 6th through 11. You want to get out of that snow? Well, I got an idea for you. Go to sunny Florida. Meet me in Port Canaveral. We're going to take a boat, a ship. We're going to take a ship together. That sounds horrible. <laughs> but we're going to take a, a cruise, and we're going to Nassau. We're going to a private beach in Haiti. I'm doing comedy, karaoke, and a podcast. Five nights. Reaps Peeps Comedy Cruise. Um, but, yeah, this is the shirt. The official shirt. That was designed by my buddy Tim Tucker. And it looks like an 80s sort of, uh, you know. He's got a good 80s vibe. Miami Vice-looking yeah. shirt. Oh, well, is he, that Don Johnson on the front and the yeah. face? Yeah. That's John John Johnson. John Johnson. Yeah, that's me with my ginger beard. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so if you want, uh, please come on the boat with us. But thank you. Yes, this is uh, – I got. I feel good with my new wardrobe today. Yeah. I like your country-ish hat, thank by you. the way. You, you can get those at johnreap.com. <laughs> um, but I got to talk about Columbus. If you were – I just did uh, six – Sold out shows in Columbus, Ohio. So if you were at the Funny Bone this weekend, thank you for coming. We had a blast. And let me tell you, Columbus, I mean, they're ready to party, dude, because they just got their curfew lifted. Ooh. Yeah. I wish we were there. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to Andrek because it's going to be a mad rush. And that's kind of what happened. People are ready to get out and have fun. And thank God they did, but um, yeah, it was uh, this. So I, I was, I'm getting used to doing the crowd work again. Okay, yeah. You know, you, you do comedy, you got to get back into the rhythm, you got to figure things out. So I've got a bunch of new stuff I'm doing about the pandemic and COVID and my life and how it's changed and all this stuff. And then I, and then I go out into the crowd and start, uh, you know, just doing a little crowd work, a little improv, and and that led to uh, me doing shots with this couple that was sitting on the front row. And I was like, uh, oh, thanks for coming out. What are you guys celebrating anything? And they're like, well, we're just happy to be out. Curfew's lifted. We got us a babysitter. We're coming to see you, ma'am. I was like, awesome. Let's do some shots. I said, what do you like? I said, let's do them vaccine shots. <laughs> so I made up a new vaccine shot. Yeah. And I told the wait staff, I'm like, if I say I want a vaccine shot, um, it could be anything. But bring, because it's a vaccine shot, you got to do two. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to do two. One more. round and second round. Right. Yeah. You got to get the booster after that. And so yeah. it's two shots and uh, it's going to be very cold, right? You got to mm. keep them cold or yeah. it won't work. Chilled then. Chilled. Chilled shots. And it can be really any alcohol, but in my joke, I say, let's do, uh, how about we uh, do a little bit of tequila, a little bit of 151, a little shot of Lysol. <laughs> so that's the joke, right? <laughs> and... The wait staff brought out these shots, and we, we did one together. And it was over, and I moved on, and everything was fine. And then about, I don't know, 10 minutes into my set, I kind of look over, and I see them both just get up and sort of scurry away, scurry away quickly. I was like, oh, what happened? Did I, did I make them upset somehow? And then I could hear a murmur happen. And then I got like a little bit of an odor. <laughs> I was like, oh, and I just thought, well, I've already done some crowd work. I might as well talk to the table next to him. I'm like, what happened over here? <laughs> and this lady goes, oh, she uh, puked in her hand. And then they left. I'm like, oh, my God. So I feel bad that I gave them these vaccine shots. And then they puked and they left early. So if that was you. I told uh, you that vaccine will make you sick. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's true. That has happened. Yeah. But hopefully they'll be immune to other uh, comedians. Yes, they'll be, they'll be immune to uh, right. Foxworth if he shows up there. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a good time. Uh, it was Valentine's Day weekend, so that was that was part of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and President's Day. That's important. Yeah. Very, I, I call it Mattress Day. <laughs> I had me and my buddy Brent Blakeney was with me. Yeah. He drove up from Raleigh, and uh, he had to drive back on that Monday through all this snow and stuff, and I hope he made it back. I reached out to him. I wanted him to, wanted him to zoom in. The Alan Jackson, might he be in the bullpen? Can the Alan Jackson hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, he's not yet. 
He's not in the bullpen yet. But uh, here in a minute, well, I'm hoping that, that he survived. Brent Blakeney survived. And he will zoom in and tell us about his trip back. Um, we'll see. <clears throat> but I want to know if your snow stories as well. Do you have any snow stories? Oh, yeah. Any, I've any... had some fun in the snow. Yeah? Yeah. I've had a lot of fun in the snow, a lot of mischief. That's more like it. Yeah. You know that that phase of my life where I was, uh, you know, assassinating uh, inflatable Easter bunnies with I'm, blow dart guns? Yeah. If you, I do know about this, and yeah. you can find this on YouTube. Yeah. So during that phase of my life, it did snow um, one winter pretty pretty good. And um, I just took it upon myself and I, I, another friend who I'll not name right now. But we would vandalize snowmen. So when someone would make a snowman in their yard, at night we would go and, like, knock it down or take so a hat mean. off of it or a scarf. Oh, the testosterone was just coming in my body. I was really ang- I had a lot of anger issues. I was an angry ginger kid, you know. So me and the uh, – You're about to say it. Yeah. Greg <laughs> would go out and beat up snowmen. And then um, I, n- I noticed the next day that we missed one. During the middle of the day, I was like, dude, we missed one. I think he called me out. He said, dude, well, how did you miss that one? I go, you're right. Let me go take care of that. And I started running towards the snowman, right? And I heard, I heard him laughing, like my buddy. Yeah. And as I'm running towards the snowman, because I was committed. Like, I'm going to knock over this snowman. And the you, momentum was behind me. I couldn't stop. And you were a hell of a football player, too. Yeah. So, I mean, we probably can imagine. Oh, Snowman didn't have a chance. Didn't have a chance. And as I was running towards it, I noticed the mom was standing in the front door behind the glass. And she saw me coming. She had a coffee. She's like, and she knew what was about to happen. And she goes, don't you do it. Don't you do it. But it was too late. And I freaking jumped sideways. Dude, oh, like, like a, a, like a, a Jimmy a Superfly Snooker or yeah. Ricky Steamboat. Flying burrito. A flying burrito. That's a Manny Fernandez flying That's burrito. That's what it is. That's what it was. I did a flying burrito <laughs> on this snowman. Yeah. And some mailbox inside of it. She opened that door and started chasing me and didn't have time to put her snow boots on. She was in her PJs. And I took off running. And luckily, I had like the, you know, the yeah. mask on and stuff. She didn't know who I was, she just knew I was some kid in the neighborhood. And I got away with it, and I felt really bad. So I apologize to whoever that lady was. It's just snow. You know what I mean? I didn't look at it as real property. <laughs> it wasn't hers. If it's hers. something that you combined out of nature. Maybe it was her art, though. Yeah, it was probably one of her kids' you know, artwork. Yeah. So I was a little vandal back then. Mm. I feel bad about that. You ever done anything like that? I never destroyed anybody's property, though. Oh, come on now. I'm not. Well, not, not what about snowball fights? We've had a lot of snowball fights, and then you put a little few extra things inside of them. That's what I'm talking about. You ever put the M80s in a snowball? <laughs> no. That sounds awesome, though. Yeah, you light it and throw it. Oh, wow. And it, like, snows again. And then when it hits, it blows up and shoots. Oh, yeah. Throw some BBs in that, too. It's exciting. With snow in it. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's like snow again. It's good, the good pack stuff. you got to pack tight. Yeah. Well, that's great. And I did make a snow penis one time in someone's yard. Was it, how big was it? <laughs> I spent like a good three hours doing it, like two in the morning. Yeah, I went out. <laughs> it was a neighbor I didn't like or whatever. I just thought, well, you're going to get a snow penis in your yard. And so oh, it was probably like three feet tall, three wow. or four feet tall with testicles and <laughs> shaped head and everything, you know. And then me and Greg also made a, a snow toilet one year. And uh, put a dog turd in it. So it was complete. You know what I mean? It's good times. <laughs> what about you guys at home? Have you ever done anything crazy like that? Uh, maybe you're snowed in right now. These are some things for you not to do. <laughs> Learn you from my mistakes. Do it. Don't do these things. Or if you do, take a picture, take a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. We need it, content. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We need content. <laughs> Uh, is Brent Blakeney here? Let's have let's have Brent Blakeney join us. I want to make sure he's alive and well. Uh, my buddy Brent Blakeney, six feet seven inches of twisted steel and sex appeal, like what? you, my friend. Brent, using my stuff. I want to make sure he's alive my and well. Checks. 
he dro- oh gosh look at this look he's at got storm he's got the imperial uh oh, what you, i forgot what those are called can, oh, can you hear me brent yeah okay let me turn me? this up a little bit can i turn it up here yeah, sure. Sure. here i'll turn it up talk to me buddy hey can you hear me i can hear where's the volume on this damn thing okay <laughs> <laughs> Turn it up a little bit. Hey, buddy, I'm glad to see you're alive and well. I made it. You made it back. Made it. So let's talk about your trip. I mean, first of all, did you have fun in Columbus this weekend? Yeah, did you? I did. We did six sold-out shows. This was one of the first times, by the way, and this was great, that um, – and I felt like, you know, a lot of times they'll ask me, do you want anything in the green room? And yeah. I'm very low maintenance, Johnny. I don't like special things. I don't like these comedians with special needs and writers. <laughs> but I thought, like, well, you know, I earned this. We did six sold out shows. I was like, how about, how about some vodka in the green room? Yeah, yeah, and that was fun, huh? <laughs> yeah, especially because, uh, especially because the first night, um, and it wasn't just us. You know, there was some of the other staff came in and, and partook. Yes. Uh, and by the end of it, I was like, okay. You know, we did a pretty good job on that bottle. Uh, I, thought was, I thought he was going to say the show. He said the bottle. We did, I think it was both. We did a good job on the yeah, show yeah, and the both. bottle. But that was like, all right, that was that. was I'm glad that happened. That was fun. And then we walk in the next night, and there is a full. A new bottle. New sealed bottle. And I was like, oh, shit. We both looked at each other and go, this might be a bad idea moving <laughs> so, forward. Yeah, this is- 100% of that. So idea. the good thing about having a waitress or a waiter go get your drink is it's going to take a minute. So you don't have the adva- you don't have the time <laughs> to just kill a fifth of Tito's vodka before the second show. But yeah, I had a good time. I'm happy. It snowed a little bit. Um remember the lady who threw up? I talked about that. The lady who puked in her hand. Yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, I felt that I mean it wasn't her fault. No. Did, wait, did you say what I give the, the vaccine the drink. Shot. Yeah, yeah. Afterward, gave it to the other guy. Oh no, I forgot about that. Wait, yeah, what? yeah, yeah. So they, she threw up, and they asked her to leave. They were very nice. I feel, I do feel bad for her, but they had just put some kind of red something or other down on her table, right. and you walked and picked it up, and you and you didn't know she had thrown up. Right. So now I didn't you're know. holding this like this pukey lady's drink, and then. <laughs> You're like, oh, should I? And then this guy comes out of the crowd and is just like, I'll do it. And you're like, all right, man. Yeah. So the lady who threw, I didn't know she had puked yet. All I saw was a full drink. I'm like, well, she's not going to come back and drink this. Somebody's going to want this. <laughs> exactly. So I handed it to another table. So I could have potentially. I mean, there are alcoholics all over the place. That won't, I mean, we got to think about this. They so. were ready to party. The curfew was lifted. We had a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, but you had to drive back, buddy. Yes. How, tell me about that trip. So, well, it started Sunday night. Yeah. And um, I, don't, I didn't even know it was going to snow. And we get, I think we were done with the first show. And they're like, yeah, it's coming. It's going to be here in like an hour. 12, 13, 19 inches. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? And they were like, yeah, it's going to be real bad. I was like, all right. So I talked to the manager and I was like, hey, you know, if I have to, can I stay in the condo another day? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. So I like, you know, I mentally prepared yeah. uh, to stay another day. Okay. Stay so to, to stay till today, this yeah. morning and drive home. And I woke up at like eight o'clock yesterday nothing had happened Mm -hmm. and i was like well i don't and that but then they were saying no 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 never mind monday night last night was going to be the bad night yeah well now i feel awful you're in this weird limbo area exactly because i mean i feel like you can everybody can i you know identify with if you have to drive eight hours there's like a mental game to that yeah you know right you got to kind of like you got to be you know, you plan, you, yeah, you plan out your eight hours ahead of time in your head. How yes. am I going to kill eight hours? Well, I got yes. these eight podcasts I can listen to. I'm going to stop at this one truck, truck stop and get my favorite chicken nuggets yes. or whatever yes. it is. Right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, so now I'm sitting here. I'm like, now, if I wait until Tuesday, I'm going to be here till Thursday. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. So I, I throw all my stuff together. I jump in the car. 
I'm like, I have family that lives in Virginia. And I was like, that's five hours away. I'll leave it. This is like 2.30. I'll like, I'll leave now. I'll get there at 7.30. I'll spend the night there. I'll drive back to Raleigh in the morning. Um, and I get in the car and I get out of Columbus and I'm in the car about 45 minutes and it starts to ice. Oh man. Like, yeah. And enough to where my windshield wipers are working, but where the water's stopping above them, mm -hmm. it's just a sheet of ice. Right. Oh, so that no. is, so now I'm, I'm already a pretty anxious person in general and I'm <laughs> just absolutely freaking out. Uh, I can't tell what's going on. And I, I eventually get to, to West Virginia and I pull off into a gas station and the entire front of my car is a sheet of ice. And to the point where like there are ice finger things <laughs> like coming off the windows and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, I should be dead. There's no reason to be, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. <laughs> right. There's no reason. But it, I mean, it, I'm, I'm here, you know, yeah, I made, you made it. it. Okay, good, good. I didn't know how much of that you had to, to go through. On it was, way. it was, you had to go back to Raleigh, but you, you stopped in Virginia. Yes. Yeah. And it was about, it was about halfway. It yeah. turned over to rain, but it, I mean, it was a stressful. Yeah. Well, thank God you made it back. And I like your background. Yeah. You got the, uh, Star yeah. Wars oh, I can do it. I got another troopers. one for you too. You were, so you wanted to. Yeah, you got, I want to hear a crazy snow okay. story. Like uh, any uh, shady okay, snowball can... fights you've been in? Oh, what's that? Okay, so this is one of my favorite pictures. This was Raleigh uh, a couple years ago. Oh, wow. I don't know how. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I can see it. I think this was on Glenwood. Oh, my goodness. This is like two inches of snow. <laughs> <laughs> this person was trying to get up the hill. Uh, and just revved it. I mean, they were hit, they were redlining it for so long, their car exploded. <laughs> oh my, is this real? Is that a, yes, an actual yes. photo from that? Uh, yes, that was, that's the news photo from oh the my. guy blowing his car up. There's pe I mean, all these people kind of, you can't see where I'm pointing. I'm, <laughs> I'm no, I can see the car it. on fire. Yeah. Like the one on fire. And then all the ones like to the right of it, those are just abandoned. Like oh, people just man. abandoned their cars in two inches of snow in Raleigh <laughs> and like walked. Home. Yeah. We don't like when it snows in this, I mean, you guys know uh, when it snows in the South, we freak out. And yeah, it, but that, that looks bad. looks way worse than I imagine. What, yeah. do you know what year that was? I, I mean, went 2017. Okay. It wasn't All that right. long ago. Yeah. Well, uh, one of the worst snows, um, looking back that I've dealt with was in Raleigh. I think it was 92. They called it snowmageddon or the snowpocalypse. Uh -huh. I think they do that every time it snows really hard. Like <laughs> that's in know, Raleigh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah or anywhere. Yeah. yeah. In the South. But, um, yeah, just stranded, trapped into Gorman crossings, apartments with my roommates. Couldn't oh. go anywhere. And, uh, I remember one roommate getting mad at the other one. Like we, all we did was just drink and, and do dumb things and start fighting each other. And then one guy got mad at the other one and threw his, <laughs> picked up the laundry basket, threw his jeans out the window. Okay. <laughs> and just was like, yeah, take that. And then they got stuck up on a gutter and then we forgot about him. They froze up there and they froze. <laughs> and then he went to get his jeans like the next day or two. And it was frozen in a perfect flying sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> Which we thought was amazing. We're like, look at these jeans. It's like Bruce Lee's frozen midair. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was in Raleigh, of all places. And yeah. It doesn't, doesn't snow a whole lot in Raleigh. And, oh, that's crazy, dude. Did you, because I remember, like, I, I used to love snow. Yeah. I mean, when you're a kid, you love it. And, we, I mean, we would, I would stay out till my hands and feet hurt, just, like, building yeah. sled ramps and stuff with friends. But as soon as I started traveling for stand up, I'm like, I hate, yes. I hate everything about it. Yep. Everything. So I, 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 I was in Wisconsin and I drove to the show. Uh, this was like eight, like eight o'clock first show, 10 o'clock second show park for the first show. It's lightly snowing mm -hmm. it out of the second show. It's about 1130 and it is eight inches on the ground. Mm -hmm. I mean, it dumped. Yeah. And I had to like, I was flying out the next morning 
and it's 12 30 at night my flight's at like eight i just drove to the airport <laughs> like i hated it so i was like i'm not getting stuck here i just drove i know they can probably get out i just slept in the not even like by the gate just the lobby of an airport yeah like you're for just... like six hours <laughs> it's the most miserable it's the worst thing it's yeah when you're an adult and it ruins your day or your yeah your, what you got going on or if you're too old to enjoy it because you know you're gonna break your coccyx <laughs> You know, you're like, <laughs> I don't want no part of this. It is nice to look at, though. And I feel like yes. tall guys hate snow more than anybody. It's a long way down, isn't it, Brent? It is. Yeah, long you're absolutely right. Yeah. We don't want to be on no ice skates or no skis or anything, <laughs> high heels. That's why you don't see us cross-dressing. <laughs> right? Can you imagine us on high heels? I'm, I am now, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they do make our calves look good, but, I mean, just it's not – it's risk reward, and it's just not there. I got to tell you another one. And by the way, if you're watching us live, we are reading your comments. And don't worry, we've got um, very funny comedian William Lee Martin's going to zoom in here in a second. I know some yeah, of you might be watching guy. from his page. Uh, we got a great small town news story um, and a little bit of Heffern and Reap. But I got to tell you this one. And again, I mean, I went through some shady times. You know what I mean? Like knocking down snowmen. And, and we got people on the, phone, on the phone, too. Three people. Okay. So I'll wrap this up real quick. We're going to have hey. – we got callers calling in with some of their uh, crazy snow stories. Nice. And uh, this is – all right, this is dumb. So, like, this is during my um, – NWA phase. Oh, so like another <laughs> like another flying burrito. Yeah, story. but uh, but older. Oh, yeah. Old. Now, now, now with the ability to drive and and stuff. So I had a truck for a while at NC State, and we thought it'd be funny if what when it snowed that we would get in the truck and we'd have snowballs and we'd pull up uh, and just start hitting people with snowballs. Yeah. Like drive, like drive, drive by, by shooting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's assault, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, right. And man, we, we went, uh, you know, NC state campus, mm -hmm. we went to the middle where the bookstore is, which is yes. on campus. And it's kind of a dead end. If you drive in there to the bookstore, you got, you know, drive in park and then turn around. There's no other way out than the way you came in. Okay. So we're, we're on campus, we're throwing snowballs at people, we're laughing, we're hee-hawing, and, um, and I'm driving the truck, by the way. I'm not the, I'm not the guy throwing the snowballs. Oh, it makes you feel better, though, didn't it? Yeah, this, little now, less I feel a little less guilty now that I say this. <laughs> Deniability. <Yeah. laughs> yes. And we pull in uh, to the, to the uh, um, bookstore, and one guy, I forget, I'm not going to name names, Shay, gets, stands up, <laughs> takes a snowball, and this dude had just gotten out of his car to go into a bookstore or whatever. And he goes, hey, man. And the guy looked up like like maybe he, it was a friend that he knew. And he had this happy, anxious look on his face. And then they just pelted him in the face. And it hit him right in the mouth. Ooh. And you saw his head do like that. I'm like, oh, no, that was too hard. Yeah, <laughs> That's not good. This this is assault. And I and I feel really bad. And I'm You're like, over here like, rolling your window up like, I don't even know. <laughs> like, why did you do that? Just hit him in the leg, not the face. Leg shot. You was going for the going for a leg, leg shot. shot. And so now I'm like, we got to get out of here, you know. But I gotta, we gotta turn around and go back the way we came. And by the time we got to the end of the parking lot to turn around, this guy was so mad he pulled his car to block us, so we couldn't leave. And he was gonna mm. beat the crap out of. I mean, look, we could have taken him. There was five of us. But the balls on this guy, he was <laughs> he was gonna kill all of us. And I'm like, well, I got a truck. We're going off road. Dude. And then we went down the thing and put it in, you know, we got out of there. But I feel so bad. And I, I don't know who this dude is, but I guarantee you he, he tells this story for the rest of it. Because what a random oh, yeah. thing to happen to you in your life. Yeah. Right? Like you just like you're this is a crazy snow day and at NC State and these dudes attacked me. Yeah. Probably ice like ball. A, probably as a score. probably like a student too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh geez, yeah. It's horrible. So, my apologies, uh, Brent. Thank you for zooming in, thank and you, hopefully, buddy. you're going to be with me in Fort Worth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If if they're if they're open. <laughs> yeah. If they're thawed out by then. 
Yeah. Uh, we'll, we're going to find out when uh, William Lee Martin zooms in because he's in Fort Worth and he can awesome. tell us a little bit about that. But uh, we got people on the phone. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Take care. Brent Blakeney, everybody. Give Six it up. feet taller than you, Tall dude. One inch. <laughs> All right, the Alan Jackson. I believe we've got people on hold who may or may not have some good uh, snowmageddon stories, and I'd like to hear some of them. So uh, let me know when they're on the phone. And uh, hi, you're on the Country Ish podcast. Who am I talking to? Your friend Roseanne. Roseanne Henshaw. Roseanne Henshaw. <laughs> Roseanne, are you uh, buried in the snow right now? No, actually, we're almost floating. You're flowing, floating? It's like floating, floating, yes. There's like huge, there was a huge amount of rain, and oh. it's like if you go outside, you sink to your knees. Mm, I, well, I forgot where you're actually. calling in from, but are you recording this? I Virginia hear like Beach. a ticking noise. Oh, Virginia Beach. That's right. So you are uh, you didn't get the snow then. But do you have a good snow story for us, Roseanne Henshaw? Well, a couple. Um, <laughs> I know when we, we lived in, we lived in uh, California and we were coming cross country, the kids saw snow for the first time. They thought someone left the, uh, ref the freezer door open. And um, when I was a kid, <laughs> when I was a kid, um, I wanted to go back home, and I mean, this was in, in New Jersey, mm. and they you would go to school. It could be three feet of snow, and they would still have school open. Yeah, You'd I have know to that's walk crazy. To you know, I mean, up in Richmond, my God, they had a quarter of an inch, and everybody was abandoning their cars on Broad Street one time when we lived there. I mean, literally abandoning their cars because of quarter inch of snow. But um, crazy. In order to get home, I had in 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 uh, New Jersey. In order to get home, I had to climb. I had to go up this steep, steep hill, but it was iced over. Yeah. So every time I tried getting up, I'd slide back down. So I almost had to be almost like a mountain climber. Gravity. Looking for plants, looking for plants and everything else to grab, using my book bag to help keep me <laughs> from sliding down the. Oh, it must have took me a good hour just to get off. Well, I'm off happy that, that you're alive through. and you made it, and yeah, I'm happy you're not, yeah. uh, 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 you're floating and you're not uh, cold. And uh, at least your power right. is well, working. Well, it's warm today. Yeah. Oh my gosh, today was almost seventy degrees. Well, that's great. Thank you for calling in, and we'll talk to you next time. The Alan Jackson put her on hold, and let's go to the yeah. next phone call. Oh, there's. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if she was going to sneak a, a, a noise in there or not. She did a little cat. Well, and did she you hear had, it? She had a little cat, but I wonder if the cat was on the record that was going well, around and around. that's what was bugging me. Was, it was the round. Yeah. I think it's like, you know, when you the, – the old vinyl album. I heard someone sniffing. we got a new person on the phone. Who am I talking to? Uh, Sean with the U. Kelly. Oh. Sean with the U. Kelly. You're not even qualified, Sean with the U. Kelly, to call from Florida to talk about cold. Oh, is that where he's calling in from? Yes, hey, he's calling from. What do you know look, about snow? Look, I, I used to live in Atlanta. I used to live in Atlanta. So Atlanta, hot uh, Atlanta. Right now it's, I love that he, yeah, his, right his argument it's, for his snow knowledge is, is that he's also lived in Atlanta. He's lived in Atlanta. Yeah. Well, it has snowed in Atlanta before. So, All right, Sean with the yeah, U. Kelly, it, I hope it, you got a good snow story for me. Well, yeah, right now I just want to say it's 65 degrees and it was sunny all day today. So yeah. none of y'all are jealous about that. But um, no, when the the blizzard you were talking about, I think it was 92 or 93. Um, yes. We had just moved to Atlanta from here. Um, and I was 13 years old. We had never seen anything but like a flurry or two here and there. Yeah. Me and my sister were out the day that it snowed. Um, and it was like 20, 15, 20 degrees. Wind is blowing. We got like, you know, seven or eight inches of snow that day. Yep. And me and my sister are the only idiots out there playing in it because we never seen it that day. And we come back, we come in the house one time and my mom's like, okay, I can't go back out anymore. But they're like, why? Man? Because the there's, we had no power, so we don't want to take freeze that. So we didn't even get to enjoy it as much as we wanted to. Yeah. Now the next day we went out and played with everybody sledding down the hills and stuff. But, you know, now, we're, now I'm back here and like I said, 
you know, 65 degrees today yeah. when everybody's whining about snow. It yeah. Wasn't too bad today. Yeah. <laughs> you ever, did you ever make snow cream? No, we didn't. We, we, no. That was the biggest, probably the most snow I ever saw at one time was that the first time I ever saw snow. So yeah. um, we never really had that much when I was still living back up there. It ha it's happened a couple times now since we moved back to Florida. Yeah. In it, it's yeah. happened in Atlanta. But they, no, they nothing uh, fly major for, in a long time. So. What you know about snow cream, Sean? That's <laughs> Well, we used to make snow cream. My mom would go out and let's make snow cream. Do you Do think I, that's something that they would do today? It, no, it seems like it's too it's toxic too today. Toxic. But I did. My dad gave me one piece of advice, Sean. If you're still on, make sure you always remember this: don't eat yellow yeah. snow. Yeah, that is. Uh, I did. PSM. I did learn. I I do know that. I, I do Thank know goodness. That. I, some Floridians don't understand that when they come up here and they try to eat the yellow <laughs> snow. Right. Yeah, that's right. I think it's frozen lemonade or something. <laughs> hey, thanks for calling in, dude. I'm happy that you're in sunny Florida where it's so 65 happy. degrees. So happy. Let's go to someone who might be snowed in the Alan Jackson. <laughs> I hope the next caller uh, has a better story than Roseanne and Sean with a U. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, is there someone on the phone? Yeah. Okay. You're on the phone right now with me, John Reap, and Sebastian. Who am I talking to? Hello, gentlemen. Oh, wait. Hmm, let me guess. Is this Samantha Dawn Kingston? Yes, sir. Now, are you, do you have snow where you're at? We have pieces of snow and lots of mud right now. Okay. Well, do you have an interesting, crazy snow story? You ever made a snow penis? <laughs> no, but we've made snow cream. Yeah, Okay. Now, how do you make mm -hmm. snow cream? What are the ingredients? I know one of them is snow. <laughs> snow, condensed milk, sugar, and vanilla. There you go. There you go. So you can make that yeah. without snow. You just get ice. Right? Exactly. Yeah. They call yeah, it ice, ice cream. Ice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. I didn't think of that. Uh, we need that. Can you get them things? That ice should... cream. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, ice cream. That's what they call it. <laughs> what about you? What about you, Samantha? I think I just rolled over this card. You got any good snow stories for me? Um, I had moved down to Cherry Point, uh, North Carolina, which is a marine base near New Bern, and it snowed. Been down there four or five years, never snowed one day. Mm -hmm. The day we decide to move back to Virginia, it snows maybe two two inches, two and a half inches, they shut everything down. That's what they do. In this, anytime it snows in the south and we're not used to it, it the, just the very prediction of snow, you know what I mean? They'll, they'll cancel school for a week. Or it'll be like, uh, you better run to the store and get bread and milk. So I don't know why. Bread, the, milk, and toilet paper. What is the obsession with bread and milk? And most of us never eat bread and milk anyway. No. But we have to go get it. Yeah. We've been programmed. Yeah, programmed for that. Yeah. You don't need that to make snow cream. No. Well, you need the milk. Condem Not that's condensed. Condensed milk, yeah. Oh, by the way, what is condensed milk? I, I, I've i heard of it. I've seen it. I'm sure I've drank it or eaten it. I mean, is it just milk packed it's, into a smaller it's container? It's in a can and it's sweetened. Oh, it's sweetened. Okay. And it's thicker. Yeah. Thicker? Oh, it is condensed. Okay, so it has so you less You can make this with condensed water. or breast milk, either one. It depends. <laughs> You get, that's funny. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Samantha. Are you doing okay? Doing okay. Good to hear. Yep. Did you like your knife? Huh? Yes. Did you like? Thank your you. Knife? Thank you for bringing it up. I was. I knew. She sent us this, dude. Were you here for that episode? I wasn't here. Yeah. So Samantha Dawn Kingston sent me. A, don't cut yourself. A country-ish knife. In the mail, and it says "Country Ish" with John Reap, and it's got the wooden panel on it. And uh, you know, I'm not a—he doesn't know how to use it. I don't Samantha, hunt, but I don't, we do thank you. But for I the, didn't understand how to shut it until yeah, stainless. Yeah. yeah, So thank you. I got a Tac Force Country-ish knife, and the next time I get a residual check, I will open it with this. Yes. So thank you, Samantha Dong Kingston. All righty. Appreciate you all calling in. I hope you're not snowed in, and I hope that you got your power on and uh, this tune.
this too shall pass. So we'll get through this. Um, the Alan Jackson, I think maybe we should take a quick break. And then uh, we've got a hilarious small town news story. We've got, <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be great. We've got William Lee Martin is going to zoom in from Fort Worth, Texas, where it is snowing right now. Hope he's got power. But uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more country ish after this. Hey, everybody, John Reap here. Just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. We love it when you do that. Also, I want you to go cruising with me. That's right. Not in a car, in a ship. That's right. It's the Reap's Peeps Comedy Cruise. Check it out. If you go to johnreap.com, click on the Reap's Peeps Cruise. All the information you need is right there. It's in 2021. You got plenty of time. November the 6th through the 11th. We're going to a private beach in Haiti. We're going to Nassau. I'm doing stand-up. We're doing a podcast, and we're doing karaoke. Five nights. It's going to be a uh, blast. Get on the boat with me, John Reap, and the Reap's Peeps Cruise. If you love this podcast and you love wearing shirts, well, we got something for you. If you go to countryishpodcast.com, Click on merchandise, it'll take you to my store, and we have an awesome t-shirt for you. It's a country-ish podcast t-shirt. Look at it. Isn't it beautiful? Also, it's got the website on there. It's a soft tee, very soft, feels good on your skin, and it helps us keep the lights on here at the at the studio. So check out countryishpodcast.com, click on merchandise, get yourself a t-shirt, and know that I love you. Hey, and we're back. Thanks for uh, hanging in there. Uh, we've got a lot of show left, and we are live right now, and we've got two interns checking your comments, Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget, William Lee Martin coming up, small town news story. Uh, but let's go to the interns real quick. Uh, Isaiah, how you doing back there? I'm doing great. I like the Prince shirt. Thank you. Uh, any interesting comments? Yeah, uh, Bob Haynes was wanting to know if Roseanne was mining ice. Mining ice. Yeah, the tick, tick, tick noise. Oh, yeah. Noise. That's what that, he that thought it did sound it was. like she was mining coal or ice or what something. What do you think that was? It sounded to me like a 33 vinyl record that it got to the end. Yeah, and ch -ch 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 yeah. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I've seen a lot of detective shows and docuseries, and that's how the mob knows they're being recorded oh. is when they're – there's like a thing that happens. Yeah, so that's so what I... So Roseanne might be in the mob, is what you're saying. Maybe she is. Maybe she's part she of the mob. An, she's a mob FBI. boss. Maybe she's part of the FBI. Uh, Elliot, the intern's intern, what about you? Any interesting comments? We had one going back to his M80 comment. So Joshua Hughes sat there and was talking about flaming snowballs, basically turning a propane tank upside down, filling the snowball with the, with the gas, lighting it, and then throwing it. <laughs> Oh, whoa. Ooh, that's dangerous. Oh, that's interesting. Sir, so wait a much minute. Much more safety. You, so <laughs> you make a snowball, and then you put gas in the snowball and throw it at a propane tank that has already have a flame coming out of it? This sounds like, like a snowy Dukes of Hazard episode. Hey, Did it ever snow at, at a Dukes of Hazard episode? It had to have at least Surely once. once. That's probably where they got the idea with the old... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking with the uh, bow and arrow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that I want to do that now. <laughs> I've never thought of that. We'll re-mention that to John Schneider next time. Yes. That would be fun, huh? Yeah. You take a snowball. Kids, I hope you're not what Don't do this stuff. But let us try it first. Yeah, let us try it. Oh, that sounds <laughs> fun. Um, all right. Well, we've got a lot of show to get yeah. to, so let's get to it. And I gotta, I have to come clean with you about something that I've been doing on Monday nights. And... I think maybe you already know about it. Um, I do another podcast. You were, is what you told me. You were doing another one. Um, I did it last night. I did it last night with uh, John Heffern, <laughs> comedian. Mm. Yeah, we did. Well, let's put this 80s, 90s boxes out here. We did some trivia with uh, listeners. Oh, I know you trivia. like trivia. Yeah. And that's... Ironically, on Monday night, I go to trivia. Oh, that's right. 
and you did trivia with without you heifer hefferin whatever his name is not heifer i thought his name was heifer he's no he's not overweight he's not a cow john heffron but he knows nothing about 80s trivia um it's not from what i saw not that i was watching oh wait not that i saw huh but if You've I would have watched it, if I would have seen it, you don't know the anything. whole time. He didn't. He didn't. Well, why don't we watch this clip? Uh, we did trivia, and we had uh, uh, fans zoom in and play some trivia with us. And th- this was an interesting Zoom call that happened on Heffern and Reap. Check this out. Uh, say your name, either John or Sully. Uh, John Reap, you be John, Sully, you be Sully, uh, and I will ask a question, and you just say, okay? Okay. Here we go. Name something that makes a sound containing the letter X. Sully. I mean, John. Sully. Uh, for- shit, I Wait a second. Alan, Alan, can you jump in? I need a ref. John said it, but he said that Sully's name. I said I Sully's know. name. He technically did say Sully's name, so I think Sully should get first guess. <laughs> Does it defer, so it goes to Sully then. Yeah. yeah. John put his foot out of bounds. I hit, I hit the wrong buzzer. Sully with the steel, something that makes a sound containing the letter X. I'll give you five seconds. Xylophone. Boom, Sully with the win on the misstep from John Reap. Sully coming in. Sully winning one versus zero right now. Here's the next question. Name a crime. Do not say the first one you think of, FYI. Name a crime that contains an R. Do not say the first thing. John. Okay. Rape. What did I say? I said the first one. Robbery came to my mind first, and I moved on to rape. You can't say that. You can't say that. That's not a fun. That was the first one I thought of. No, you win. I didn't know it was in your head. (laughs) Okay, that's a weird. (laughs) My last name is Rape. It sounds very close to rape. Okay, can we? Okay, we're moving on. Okay. I don't know. I kind of. It's one to one. Wally, that one. That's. uh, I got to go with the crowd on that one, but I don't know. I kind of think you, it should be okay. Here's the next one. Something. Hold on. <laughs> okay. We're going to go this one. We're going to go this indie rock. Here we go, everybody. I'm going to change how my voice is. <laughs> Something that fits in your hand containing an H. Something that fits in your hand containing an H. Sully. Sully. Wait, you have to, if you have to say your name, you have to say the answer almost. I don't. Immediately. The first thing that came to mind was heroin. Oh, my God. Heroin. (laughs) Well, I guess that would fit in your head. This this podcast is taking a weird, he he said heroin. I wish I had a timer. Uh, I was just going to say hair. Two to one. Okay. Heroin heroin in your hand? Hair dryer. Um, hold, hold it. Yeah, I don't know. I thought you had yeah, to. I guess you're holding. Okay. <laughs> Come on, dude. Gonna lighten up a little bit. Sorry. I know it's hurtful. Mm. It gets you. It gets you right here, don't it? Mm. Look. It Look, you're here with me night. right now. Let's let's. Wait. Let's, I, let's well, in fact, wait. Speaking of right here, right now, is he in the bullpen? Yeah, yeah, he's here. He's okay, right. zooming in right now, all the way from very snowy Fort Worth, where I'm going to be, by the way. I'm doing shows in this dude's town, Hyenas Comedy Club, February 25, 26, 27, Hyenas in Fort Worth. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to talk about this. Zooming in all the way. I've known this dude for quite some time. Uh, he's a cowboy. He likes his cowboy hat. Let's all welcome right now, William Lee Martin. <laughs> and he's here with us right now, William Lee Martin. How are you, buddy? Good, John. Well, actually, I'm cold, man. Uh, oh, 
you know, I'm in North Texas, so we've uh, we've got our one week of winter right now, <laughs> and uh, literally next Wednesday it's forecast to be 72 degrees. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I saw that uh, in the news last night. You guys are frozen solid. At least you have power. Yeah, I you know I I almost feel guilty because I have power. And uh, but there are people that have been without power for some time, though. Do you, where did you get your start? I actually got it uh, with hyenas in Arlington, uh, I guess, 25 years ago. Now it's uh, been 25 years. And, and uh, so I was writing advertising. I was 30 years old and I was miserable. Uh, you know, I used to look out my floor floor window thinking, well, floor floors kill me or just break my leg. <laughs> it was never a good break either. You know, like even in my mind, it was like high up on the leg. We'd have to have a body cast and a catheter. Right. right. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> job, and then one day I lost my job in advertising. We all did. We got uh, sold to another company. And it's my grandmother who said, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, why don't you go home and look in the mirror and ask yourself, are you happy? Mm-hmm. You're almost 30 years old and I never see you smile. I like to say I did that, but I didn't, buddy. I, I went home and I stayed in a fetal position for five and a half months. Oh, boy. <laughs> and six, but unemployment runs out in five and a half, right? Right, right. The true story, uh, I'd written a book called Life on a Neon Moon, Now That She's Gone, and Took the Dog With Her, which was about breakup. And it was also 90s, you know, the mid-90s when country bars were big. So it was basically a dating book. But everybody kept telling me that it read like stand-up. And now I've lost this job. I wasn't very happy with doing any of it. And a UPS driver comes next door one day and I go next door to pick up a package for my friend. But my real uh, uh, objective was to go next door and tell him my pity party. Right. Yeah. Right. And I told him I was fired, told him I was a single dad, didn't know how I was going to make ends meet. And he looked at me like, good, that's one less box I'll bring out here, dude. Right. And I went home and I was dejected and I turned off the phone and the television, all the distractions of life. And I'd simply ask in the mirror, am I happy? And I knew the answer before I even said it. But I, I sit there and I, I for four hours later, I called my uh, grandmother and I said, since I was five years old, I just wanted to be on stage, television, radio, and print. And she said, go for it. And I said, what if I lose the house? Mm-hmm. She said, buy you another one, boy. Mm-hmm. She said, I don't want you to be 30 or 50 or even 80 and go through the would have, could have, or should have. Right. And from a woman that found out she had a tumor on her lung about the size of my fist and dying of lung cancer. So oh, wow. that's how we started. I mean, uh, I, I started out at Hyenas in Arlington and never looked back, man. Like who did you look up to as com- you know uh, as a as a young guy? Other comedians. What I was watching a lot of comedy, and you know now it's you it's it's sad because the moment that you mentioned Bill Cosby, everybody right. goes whoa, right? But it, his album uh, himself when he's in the brown suit. Yeah, I know it uh, well. That is to this day, I still tell people Bill Cosby himself is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Hour and 20 minutes of just punch you in the face funny. It never gets, you know, overly aggressive or it never gets preachy. And it still holds up today, man. If you watch that thing, I watched it a couple of months ago. And if you watch that thing, that thing still holds up. Yeah. I was also a Tim Allen fan. You know, he had come out with uh, Men Are Pigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was watching, you know, uh, Robert Klein, you know, some of the smarter guys too. And, and, uh, and I just, you know, I, I really wanted to be in show business since I was little. I wanted to be a songwriter or uh, I wanted to be in the movies. I wanted to write movies. That's all I really wanted to be. Yeah. The reason why I went into advertising, because, you know, I realized at some point I'm not good in, looking enough to be an actor. Right. <laughs> and I, uh, I, I can write songs, but I can't sing them. Yeah. Uh, so advertising was going to be my lead in to uh, just be in show business. There was simply to be in show business. And then, uh, so we found stand up, and you know, I went from that open mic to headlining the clubs in about three years, which was unheard of. Yeah, and, that's, and, that's uh, really quick. I remember you as Cowboy Bill Martin. At some some point, you changed it to William Lee Martin. Was that just sort of a natural progression? I used to be called the Hickory Dance Machine, and I had to get rid of the dance part because I'm too old to dance now. You know what I mean? <laughs> Well, I didn't you understand. Uh, actually, uh, the name Cowboy Bill actually came from my grandfather. My grandfather's name was William Lee. My name was William Lee. He didn't want me to be called Little Bill, 
because he, he he said he'll hate it as a grown up. Call that boy Cowboy Bill. And I was actually named after the old wrestler back in the 60s, Cowboy Bill Watts. Okay. Grandpa was a huge wrestling fan. And then he died when I was six years old. So I didn't allow anybody to call. He was the only one that called me Cowboy Bill anyway. But I didn't allow anybody to even call me Bill or Billy. I was William Martin all the way through school. And then uh, uh, when I went into uh, uh, this whole stand-up thing, I had been been called Bill since uh, I, I was having people call me Bill in college and all the way through. Okay. But I written the book, you know, Life on the Neon Moon, and I got a guy on, on a radio station to give me a, a bit part to call in to promote these ladies' nights at this dance club in, in Arlington. And we scripted it out and everything else, you know, and I was really taking the lead back from an unknown guy named Larry the Cable Guy. You know, Larry, Rings a bell. Yeah, <laughs> I had a couple of hits. So he, uh, so I was going to do my call in, but it was just going to be Bill Martin calling in, right? My buddy oh. Bill. Yeah. I was calling in from Cowboys in Arlington, and the guy says, we've got Cowboy Bill from Cowboys at Arlington calling in on ladies night. And it just felt like it fit right. Perfectly. Yeah. Right. Um, and so the next week was my first open mic. And the guy goes, you probably heard him on uh, KSCS, which nobody had. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you're gonna, and he introduced me as Cowboy Bill. Yeah. And so I Cowboy Bill all the way through for 20 years of my career. But what it, what it did was, Guys that are real cowboys, and I know a lot of real cowboys, you know, and and uh, they can ride and rope and do it for a living. Well, they didn't like coming to the show because unless they saw me, because they're real cowboys. Why is this guy calling him cowboy? Right. And then black folks and brown folks wouldn't come to the show because they damn sure ain't going to go see a guy named Cowboy Bill. <laughs> sure. And then, and then uh, you know, about ten years ago, I got out on the cruises. And uh, when I first went there, I thought I was actually, I thought I was taking my career to end, you know, cause I, I was actually the fifth guy uh, signed with the management group uh, with blue collar when mm -hmm. it first came out, you know, with four points management. Okay. So I went from there, you know, in 2000 to, you know, 2010 and now I'm doing cruising and I thought my career was over. Right. And I didn't know that they had changed up the whole philosophy and it was a comedy club. And I was working a whole bunch of different audiences. I mean, it was right. cross -board, completely different. And then, and then I decided I, I, I got my own CMT special. Mm -hmm. My wife and I produced it ourselves. I mean, we're like the little rascals around here. By God, let's put on a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. We That's built, awesome. We built the set. You know what it is. You know, you're part of all of it. And yeah. uh, so I sold the special to CMT. Cowboy Bill Martin, let the laughter roll. And I was cussing all the way through the thing, you know, because I worked clean the first five years. Yeah. And 15, I worked dirtier and dirtier. And then, and then I did the CMT special. Okay. And it, it went well, big numbers, everything was great, but I still felt like something was missing. Okay. Something was tugging at me. And then I rededicated my life to Christ. And yet I still wasn't changing my act, you know? Yeah, that's uh, I. I get that. I see guys like that where they go, "Well, I'm, I'm used to doing it this this way, right. but my life has changed." But it takes it takes a little a little bit for the act to change with the life sometimes. Well, and for me, it changed overnight. I was out mowing the grass, and I was literally praying about it, John. I said, and I've I, I've said this before. I, I was I was praying. I said, God, why don't you let me grab the brass string? You know, you you let Rodney Carrington grab it, and, and you let uh, uh, Ron White grab it. So obviously, there's not a morality clause. Uh huh. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, so obviously, there's no cussing stipulation. Why yeah. don't I? You know. So and and just like you and I are talking, the voice in my head said, "Listen, son, I put you out on a cruise ship for seven years to change anything about your life." And the only thing you were willing to change was your name. And you want me to work the miracle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're waiting on me. I'm waiting on you. Okay. Yeah. And I made wholesale changes to the act that day. I, I, I went in and just started dropping every bit that, that, uh, you know, it, 
and also all the words and everything else. And, you know, there were times that I would look back at a set that was taped. And if I, if I took out the word the and F out of it, you know, I only did about eight minutes of material. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I also wanted to ask you about your uh, Cowboys Who Care Foundation. Oh, thanks, man. So, uh, well, we started Cowboys Who Care uh, in 2011 because of a girl named Ashley Miller. Her mom and dad asked me to put my name on a golf tournament to raise some money for her. She had a rare form of cancer. Mm -hmm. We were happy to do that, and the cancer goes into remission, and it came back with a vengeance. And she lost her battle with cancer in June of 2011, right? Uh, yeah, 2011. Okay. And I knew I wanted to help and didn't know how. You know, I was part of the Wrangler Tough Enough to Wear Pink program uh at the time which i looked great in pink but other than that i don't think i was helping much yeah i was pretty sure people were aware of breast and cancer right yeah sure and so uh but with this thing with the kids i knew i wanted help and didn't know how and then one day i get put on a carnival cruise ship and they put me in a room with a bunk bed and i'm pissed i mean i am pissed right yeah and and uh and and, and I'm six foot three, so setting up is difficult all week. And I'm really into me, me, me. <laughs> right. And then the next day, I'm just Googling kids with cancer, kind of opened it up to the universe, right? And it had all these big, bright, beautiful faces, smiles, and bald heads. And in the mirror, because of the room that I was in, I, I could see my cowboy hat. Mm. And that's when it hit me. That was the aha moment. Well, these kids need cowboy hats. What seven-year-old wants to wear a wig? What seven-year-old wouldn't want to wear a cowboy hat? Okay, yeah. And my wife and I form Cowboys Who Care, and our, our mission is to provide uh, smiles, support, and brand-new uh, cowboy hats to boys and girls with cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. In the last, you know, nine, uh, almost ten years now, we've given away a little over 10,000 brand wow, new hats. Oh, no kidding. That's great. Thank you. Resist all resist all's are have been, been our sponsor all the way through this, the largest hat manufacturer. They're also part, uh, sister, uh, with Stetson. So, uh, they're all out, made out of Garland, Texas. So wow. they're just wonderful. And it really is, uh, it really does put a smile on kids faces and we are truly expanding the program. But right now the people that are listening, because we can't get out to the hospitals, we have a program called a request a hat. And if you know a child in your neighborhood that God forbid has cancer or a life threatening illness, you can go on our website, cowboyswhocare.org, fill out the form, and we'll send that child a brand new cowboy hat free of charge. No shipping, no handling, no strings attached. They just have to follow under those umbrellas, you know? Yeah, so yeah. we, we do have a couple of people that have sent us a request and we put on the form now we have to because of America, the way it is. It's like, does your kid have these? Two oh, right, right, no, right. No, no, just loves hats. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you great. believe that that happens? I just got this hat sent to me in the mail uh, from my manager because he heard me talk about how I'm going to be running for the for, running for mayor of Hickory. And he put this on a hat. It just says mayor of Hickory. So um, now I have to wear this hat. <laughs> you know, uh, I've also been doing songwriting and, and, uh, and screenwriting since the lockdown. And, uh, I just signed a deal with, uh, Myriad, uh, publishing in Nashville, a publishing deal and everything else, but I'm doing a lot of writing. And what you're telling me is that you're 48 years old. You moved in with your mom, you're running for mayor. And if we don't write a, a, a treatment for that together, I'm going to be very hurt. I'm going to be very hurt. If we can't write, you know, a sitcom treatment for that right there, because that brother is a show. I agree with you a hundred percent. And maybe this, this is going to be a way for me and you to keep in touch. We're going to work on this project together. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to zoom in and talk to me. I, I, I want to do this again sometime. I feel like we haven't talked in forever and it's just good to see your face again, brother. Yeah, you too, man. And, and you know, one of my favorite, uh, I don't remember, I don't know if we can talk about this story, but uh, Vinnie Paul's restaurant, <laughs> right? He had uh, he had pictures with celebrities all over uh, the walls. Okay. And you, you all too had a picture on the wall there after you left. I don't know if you knew that. I have a so, picture on in that restaurant? Uh, yeah. So I don't know if the restaurant's still open because I haven't been there since Vinnie's gone. Okay. Right? 
but I also have a picture there at the restaurant. Uh, but it's the very last picture at the exit. Really? It always makes me happy because I always imagine somebody touching one of the steaks uh, or potatoes, <laughs> right? <laughs> and some big uh, uh, bus boy, you know, grab a hold of him. Yeah. Swim uh, his head into the wall as they're throwing him out of there. And then he looks up and goes, Cowboy Bill. <laughs> That's the last thing I want to say. I might have to go uh, revisit that restaurant while I'm in town. I'll let you know if it's still there. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Uh, you know Butler will know, so. Yeah, I'm sure I'll see him. Well, All right, brother. Know. Hey, I really appreciate you doing this, man. All right? Have a good one, brother. Take care. We'll see you, man. All right. Thank you for uh, watching that. And I, I love talking to him. It's uh, hopefully I will get to see him in uh, Fort Worth, Tejas. That's Texas uh, at Hyenas Comedy Club. Um, but we got more show to do uh, real quick. Let me go to the interns. Any interesting comments since uh, we've been talking to old cowboy Bill Martin? I like to still call him cowboy Bill Martin. I know he changed his name. Yeah, somebody earlier said that um, I'm glad you're a comedian because you're not, not that great of a singer. Oh, well, how nice. Uh, and me too. But, you know, I got to say, Cher is not my go to song. Well, they're talking about well, you weren't that great of a singer. Huh? I think you're a pretty good singer, John. He's pretty good. Oh, thanks. Like, so. I think you could make it on American Idol. Thank you, buddy. I just like the way it sounds when he talks. Yeah. Maybe Dancing with the Stars would be a better fit for you. I tried Dancing with I the know. Stars. Didn't hear anything. You know? I used to be the Hickory Dance Machine. Yeah. Sent them the tape. Nothing. Nothing. No. So that, say la vie. Say la vie. Say la vie. What were you telling me uh, early the other day about that? That some, that someone you know got those got that mixed up with. Someone I know, you know, when someone comes up to you and says, Oh, I think we've said this before, been here before. That's deja, deja vu. vu. Yeah. But she said, oh, I think I just had say la vie. <laughs> I love that. Do you correct someone in that moment? or do you I, just I just started and laughing it? and crying. <laughs> yeah, that's know. great. To me, that was great. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we, uh, we move on, say la vie, deja vu, <laughs> to our final segment. Dare I say, sometimes might be the anchor of the show. Um, and this, you know, this is going to be great. Just, just kind of in time for Valentine's day, a nice little love story. Uh, you know, there's a lot of negative things that are going on. And Ooh. Here we go. Thank you, Justin Clyde. Why don't you tell them what's coming up? We're just small town dudes with small town news. Breaking stories of crimes committed you never do. Mind your P's and Q's or they'll cover you. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All righty. Speaking of small town news, this is uh, from your one of your favorite places in the United States of America. Florida. Oh, of course. Yeah. They're, they could use a little snow to cool their jets a little sometimes. You know what I mean? They're, they're all heated up. Crazy. Always heated up. Let me read you this one right all here. Right. A Florida man stole an engagement ring and wedding bands from one girlfriend and used them to propose to another girlfriend. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. It's just too much love in his heart. This is a, every Saturday night in Florida. <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> An arrest warrant was issued for Joseph Davis, 48 years old, who had not been found as of Friday. So this dude. He's on the run. I think he's still on the run, Joseph Davis. Um, the investigation started earlier this year when a woman from Orange City, Florida. You know where that is? Yep. Um, where is that, by the way? Is that close to out, is that outside of Orlando? It's all in central, yeah. I think okay. it's a little bit below Orlando. So this is what happened. This woman from Orange City, Florida, told detectives she had discovered her boyfriend was actually engaged to someone else. And um, she looked up the fiance's Facebook page, the other girls. Like she looked her up on Facebook 
and she noticed a photo of her wearing a wedding band and engagement ring that was identical to her own from a prior marriage. Okay, hold the press. Yes. Talk so to me, Goose. So you're saying uh-huh. Joseph, yeah, Joseph stole Davis. this girl's rings, former girlfriend. Yeah. So was, she was already married. Yeah, who was married before, who got a set of rings from her previous husband. But didn't, I guess she kept them. Yeah. Yeah. So Joseph took another man's rings. Right. That he gave to a woman that he was there. Proposed to her. And proposed to another girl with those rings. Yeah. And then the girl uh, number one saw this girl number two. Right. On Facebook. Yes. I mean, look, it's 2021. It's tough to get away Listen with Listen to me, guys. It's 2021. You cannot get away with this stuff anymore. I mean, these are crimes from the 1800s. Yeah. <laughs> or right? at least the 1980s. 1980s. Before the internet. <laughs> all right? So wise up. When the woman checked her jewelry box, she found out her rings were missing. Uh, as were several other pieces of jewelry, including a diamond ring that belonged to her grandmother. The total value of the stolen property, $6,270. So it wasn't just a crime of passion, like I'm going to steal this ring to use for this girl. He stole other things. You know what I mean? Other jewelry. I mean, this was like $6,000 worth of stuff. Mm -hmm. This is straight up theft as well. Stole her heart and her dang rings. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, the Orange City woman reached out to the new fiance. Right? Oh, so oh. she found her and she reached out to her. And then she returned some of the items. And they both called it off with that guy. So they both canceled their relationship with this Davis. Is what happens. Yep. So you try to get two, you end up with nothing. That's exactly right. Let that be a should, lesson. That should be a lesson. <laughs> and they called it off with Davis. Who also went by the names of, so he had alias names. Oh, I want to hear. Yeah. Uh, Joe Brown, very generic. Marcus Brown. So this dude, Joseph Davis, had two aliases, both with the last name of Brown. Okay, this is Joseph. That's him right That's there. the real Joseph Davis. I think I, he looks like the guy from Pulp Fiction. Ving, Ving, Ving Rames, is yeah. that his name? Yep. Wait, did that guy pass away? I think he passed away, oh. mate. No, he's still kicking because I think he does the Arby's commercials. I think. Oh, it, Alan is isn't he the Arby's guy, <laughs> or do you not know? I figured you'd know. Wait, you, figured you can't I'd throw know? Alan into this. <laughs> yeah, I figured I would know. I, I figured you would know because you're the. A, I, you, you're asking me about Arby's. I don't know the <laughs> Arby's spokesperson. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's hilarious, by the way. I yeah. like that he just tried to include you <laughs> in the, in that. In Help his, me out, Alan. Uh, <laughs> in the mistake. <laughs> Uh, because oh, that's the, the Green Mile guy is that the Green right, Mile? Right, that's no, who I'm. Wait, thinking. no, that the Green Mile guy. Yeah. He's dead. No, he and died. That's the one he looks like. Yeah, the Green Mile guy's uh, dead. Oh, that's uh, oh. uh Michael uh, Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah, Michael. So he I, away okay, he years. looks more like Michael Clark okay. Duncan, and that guy passed away. Yeah. So why not use his name? <laughs> use his name. <laughs> right. Why go with Joe Brown and Marcus Brown? Well, Joe Brown's the judge. Maybe that gives you more. Remember? Oh, Joe Brown, the judge. Right. The judge show Joe Brown. Yeah, judge Joe Brown. But he doesn't look like that Joe Brown. No, he doesn't. But he went with Marcus Brown and Why Joe do you think Brown. he went with Marcus? I don't know. I think it's a good name. You know? And he's also Is wearing that a player's a, name. I wonder if he got that, where he got that, uh, that piece of jewelry he's wearing around his Probably neck. Probably out of her uh, jewelry box. What is that he's wearing? That's an American Liberty Eagle coin. Oh, you know your coins. I do know my coins. I, mean, I wonder how much that thing's worth. Uh, so it's about $1,800 with the change. 24 karat gold. And he's also wearing, looks like it be an Army shirt. Yeah. Is this also stolen valor? He's got discipline. <laughs> well, who knows if he actually is from the Army, though? You can't trust this guy. You don't know. Who knows if Joseph Davis, Marcus Brown, or Joe Brown were even in the Army? I mean, I'm sure one of these guys were. So this, this is what happens now because women, they get on that mess. They probably got on Messenger started talking to each mm-hmm. other mm-hmm. and busted. Sure. And now he has to be on the – he's fleeing. <laughs> yes. He he's is on the on run. The run. Uh, and they're looking for him. And that's, this photo was posted by the, uh, the Sheriff's Department or that, whatever in that town. 
Uh, scroll back up there, Alan. I want to see the actual name of the town. If you keep going, yeah, yeah, Volusia. Oh, oh, oh. Is this that is my saying that right? Volusia. This is Volusia. the county. Yeah. Sean, Sean, you the Kelly. Oh, is we, that where we, Sean? Well, he lives Kelly's in Volusia from? County. Is I do. Well, let's get let's get him on the case. Well, we need to. Me and him. We'll start. Sean searching. with the U Kelly. I know you're still watching this. Uh, th- this guy's a loose in your town. We're gonna find him. Uh, because there's two women that uh, he has their hearts um, and, and their, their jewelry. jewelry. Yeah, the fiance who lives in Orlando told detectives she had been duped too. Davis once took the fiance. This is where the story. Oh, it goes on. There's it more gets to the story. Worse. Okay. Right? So Davis once took the fiance to a house that actually belonged to the Orange City woman while she was at work. And claimed it was his. He then asked the fiance to move in with him, and then he disappeared. <laughs> he just ghosted. I think he knew they were on to him. But wh- what? Why? Why? I mean, he went the other girl's house. Which this would never work That's, for me because no. because if I would take a girl to not tell you know a, a female's house, I would think the female would notice that there's female things. Take a female into your house sometime okay. and let them look around. And the first thing they're going to look for, they're going to the bathroom and they're going to see if there's any female stuff in the bathroom. <laughs> they're going to check your trash cans. They're yeah. going to check everything. They look around. Well, I feel like if it's her, maybe maybe she hadn't put her stuff in there. Maybe it was a house that was on the market. I don't know the whole oh, story. So she had decorated. Maybe there was nothing in there, okay. in the house. And he was I mean, he could have been that bold. To walk in and go like, hey, will you move in with me? I mean, forget these pictures on the wall of this other lady. Yeah. The family. Forget the dresses in the closet. <laughs> right. Um, so I don't know that part of the story, but I would like to find out. So if you know Sean with the U, Kelly, why don't you contact us? Um, but, yeah, how bold. What a ballsy move. Um, she goes, by that time, the fiancé discovered her laptop, computer, and jewelry were also missing. So... Yeah. Even though uh, they did not have his real name, the jilted woman, women, remembered oh. that he had a relative in North Carolina. Of course he did. And detectives were able to track down the relative who identified Davis. So I guess maybe they did. They identified. No, they identified him, but they don't know where he's at. So mm-hmm. they haven't found him, but they do know it is Joseph Davis, 48 years old. Davis. Now, he's also got a, ha- a history. He's got a past. Uh, Davis has an active arrest warrant for a hit-and-run crash with injuries in Oregon and previously has been arrested for possession of fictitious ID. No. Uh-huh. Filing a false police report. Domestic assault. Uh. Not good. And possession of cocaine with intent to sell. So, look. I mean, we're kind of making light of it, but that's not, this is not a good guy. Right? No. I wonder how many others there are. Right. These are the only two we know about. Yeah. Remember the sheriff in Texas that had five or six? No. You know Wait, about this, this sounds familiar. Yeah, it was a story a couple months ago. Yeah. He had one here, one there, one here. Yeah. Married. Smooth operator. I'm talking about, I need this guy for sales. <laughs> well, like I'm saying, this, this is a crime that you could have got away with before. We used the to get internet. away with a lot of this stuff. It's tough I don't now. think this is something. I don't. I'm surprised people are still trying to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the balls on this guy, right? You'd have to have some good backstory, right? Build you a good backstory with some activity. <laughs> okay. Six eight months do of you, activity. Wait, do you think maybe he made some fake Facebook pages by the name of sure. Marcus? Davis or Marcus Brown or Joe Davis or whatever. I mean, it's not that hard. I mean, you made a Marcus Stamos website. (laughs) That's true. I did do that. Yeah, that's true. Now you can do anything with it. I mean, that's why we came in second, according to the World Podcasting Federation, because it's I made it up. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, Isaiah, what do you think about all this? Mm. (laughs) I don't know what to say. Mm. Mark, what is this stolen valor I'm looking at? Technically, it's not stolen valor because it's just like getting a shirt from UNC or Wake Forest because that's it's that shirt's basically a PT shirt, a physical training shirt. Okay. But the uh, had he been wearing medals or whatever, then then it becomes stolen valor. 
Got it. So he's he's not under. So you can be a fan of the army, and have an army shirt on. Yeah. And that's not stolen. You got, unless you say, "Well, I got this when I was in basic training or whatever." Yeah. Right. 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 And you're military, right? Yeah, I'm retired military. See, so so you guys don't play that crap. No, I mean, and he could have been in and got out. We don't know the previous stuff, but right. considering the history you read off, yeah, yeah, I, who I knows? Whole water. Yeah. All right. Well, according to the sheriff's office, where uh, the jail where Davis previously was booked, okay, <laughs> noted that he has a tattoo on his left arm, and it says, "Only God can judge me." <laughs> Well, uh, that's not true. Uh, it's nice, but it's not true. Uh, we have judges, and yep. they can judge you, and they can sentence you. Uh, apparently, he's already been sentenced uh, yeah. one time. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a nice tattoo. So, but he maybe he can get it touched up while he's in. <laughs> right. Only God in Volusia <laughs> County judge and can my, judge me. And my dad, Joe Brown, <laughs> <laughs> whose title is Judge Judge Joe Brown, judged me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, there you go, oh, buddy. Oh, my gosh. The town may be small, but the news is huge. All righty. Thank you all for watching, and, and, and uh, hopefully you shared it. Uh, hopefully you subscribed. And uh, tell a buddy. And um, we're out there. We're making things happen. I want you to follow me. There's my website. Uh, well, that's not me. If you go to johnreap.com, <laughs> that's, that's me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> tour dates. I am going to be in, uh, well, I didn't even mention this. I have two shows, Memphis, Tennessee, February 24th, at a place called Lafayette's Music Room. I've never been there before. Uh, the last time I was in Memphis was like, God, 20 years ago or something. So I've not been to Memphis in a while. Hope that uh, you guys in Memphis will come out and see me at Lafayette's Music Room. And then we got Fort Worth, Texas at Hyenas. Excuse me, I'm, I'm burping right now. And then Chattanooga, Tennessee, March 19 through 20. Come see me at the Comedy Catch in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm still doing the TikToks. Uh, I'm still doing cameos. Ginger Beard Man still available on Amazon Prime. Ginger Payne on YouTube. And don't forget, like I said, just to rate, review, subscribe, and share. And I hope that you're not uh, uh, snowed in too bad. Don't worry, it'll fall out. Um, for Elliot the Intern's Intern. For <laughs> Isaiah the Intern. For Amar. For The Alan Jackson. For Sebastian. I'm John Reap. Bicycle! Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, but I wouldn't know that I'm from a cul-de-sac. Don't chew tobacco and I don't smoke crack. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, it's a simple kind of life, never did me no harm, but I do know a guy with only one arm. Keep your fancy smartphones and your silver park cars. Thank God I'm country-ish. Well, I got a podcast, it'll make you giggle. It ain't number one, it's right in the middle. The town's not big, but it ain't too little. It's time for Hey everybody, it's me again. I just want to say thank you for listening or watching this podcast. You know, we couldn't do this without supporters like you. Oh wait, are you not a supporter? Well, you could be. It's real simple. Go to countryishpodcast.com. Click on the word support. That will take you to our Patreon page. That's our support page. And from there, you can support us many different ways. There's uh, different levels. You got $5 and up. You got Pewter Pro, Rhinestone Level, Executive Zirconia, all the way up to Platinum Elite. And all of them come with different rewards. We're talking hats, T-shirts, ginger beard masks, even be a guest on the show. You got to check out our Patreon page. Go to countryishpodcast.com, click on support, and thank you.
still doing the share stare. If I could 